Hi, Helge. Dramada Stream will be released on the 22nd of July. Yes. What can the fans expect from this album? It actually depends on what they like. <laughs> if, sure, if, but you know, if, if, if the if, fans if, of the band, they'll probably, the probably fans, like it. If it would be the fans of the band, they could expect that we didn't change a lot, um, that we tried to make a good Dreamtime album, and I think we succeeded. Um, so I would dare to say they could expect to be satisfied. Hopefully. I think they can. From what I've listened, it's your best album so far, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now, one thing that I found uh, curious is that in Japan, this album was already re released in the, on the 8th of June. Yes. Uh, why did you decide to release the, the, this album in Japan almost two months before the rest of the world? We dis didn't decide anything. We didn't decide anything. Um, traditionally, since records in Japan are much more expensive, or used to be much more expensive, than they ordinarily are in Europe or in the USA, the Japanese normally insist on having the first release to protect their market. But that was not the case. In this, this it was... Um, the Japanese didn't insist on, on releasing that before everybody else. It was just that, I don't know, I, I think... So when we started looking for a record company for this, um, for this album, we started in Japan first, that's true, because that's... Well, historically, well, that's, that's from my background with Fair Warning, that's where the biggest audience is. So that is, we, we started there and we started looking for European record companies and we were talking with um, three European companies and three Japanese companies. And these talks took extremely long. And on the other hand, we made a mistake. Um, it, our management relied very much on a certain European record company and I followed that. I didn't say, no, we have to hurry. So it was my mistake as well. Um, but when they made their offer and I said, this is unacceptable, um, then we have to look for another record company. And that, and with, with um, Pride and Joy, with whom we are now, um, they suggested this uh, release slot. And they didn't seem to care for, for Japanese imports or something like that, um, because the Japanese imports are horribly expensive anyway. So it is, has nothing to do with the decision of the ban. It is just, I think it's record company politics, you would call it. Yeah, sounds like it. And yeah. how have, how have the, the, react, the Japanese reactions been so far? So far, very good. Uh, we, can, we can be content. The, um, we entered the charts there, which is a really good thing, which we will not do in Europe, nowhere. I mean, it's even if it's the rock charts. Um, and from what I can put into the translator of critics that, I, that I've read or that I got sent, um, it's, it's all good. But the, the thing that is a bit complicated is you are not there, you, you will uh, you will see after half a year, we will not see immediately how successful or how, or how or unsuccessful a record was. Um, you, but you have you have hints. So we, we got into the rock charts at number two. That was the highest place we, we, we reached, which directly behind Def Leppard, which I think I don't like Def Leppard that much when they when we are on place number two. Yeah, New then, Dream Tide is definitely better than uh, New Death Leopard. Well, I, I, I think, think it was, this was very nasty of, of uh, Death Leopard. I, I, this is not really uh, Englishman's decent behavior. No, I didn't like that. So from, from seeing that, it, we, we did well. But then on the other hand, if you read written comments, those who are not interested in those who don't like it, normally don't make the effort to write. So 
how successful that in the end was, we know after one or after half a year, but at the moment it looks pretty good. And it's a completely different market from the from the European one. And uh, uh, well, it's basically, not, the bands that you see there, except for Dreamtide, it's not so different. If you look at the charts, I mean, that even in Europe you get wind of, or you 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 notice that Def Leppard have a new record. And maybe you would know that Michael Schenker has a new record, and maybe you know that that Michael Monroe has a new record. So that is the like the surrounding that is surrounding us in Japan, and I think it's pretty much the same in Europe. Only that um, rock in Europe is well, it's between a rock and a hard place. Unfortunately, and basically, if you uh, were second behind the Leppard, it basically means that you were presently first because it's almost impossible to compete with the giants like the uh, uh, Leppard, especially when you come uh, out of uh, 14 years uh, without a, a record. Well, uh, yes, what? I would I would have preferred to compete with Journey than I would have. I, I think I would have accepted that more easily. <laughs> Yeah, in my but opinion, but they're, they're, they're late. They're really late. <laughs> yeah, maybe a new album. I think I, uh, I saw somewhere that maybe a new album will come, but you never know. And in my okay. opinion, New Dream Tide is better than New Death Leopard, like light years away. Well, yeah. So, as, as I said, um, if we follow that hint, it looks really good, but what the whole story is, we will the, the future will tell. Yeah, and hopefully it won't come uh, uh, right on for you. And uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, Drama Dust Dream is released 14 years after your last album, Dream and Deliver. Why did it take so long to deliver this album? I don't know. I don't know. It, do, it, it doesn't... Well, um, I started Dream type when, when Fair Warning split in, in the year 2000. And later, both bands were active, and I thought it's okay to do both, but it was just not possible. And um, so if you look back at the, 90, at the 90s or in the beginning of the 2000s, making a living on, on rock music was, all, was still possible. And today it is very hard to do that. I mean, after Corona, it's or after COVID, it's it's really hard. But in in, in the years, in these fourteen years, um, I just had to see what to what to do. And um, there were fair warning records to make, and I worked for other people, and it was all there was always work, and there was always something to do to, um, that I had to do. It's not that I'm complaining. It's not that I didn't like to do that. But, um, well, you can, you can deduct some years because these two years of, of COVID don't count because we didn't want... I mean, this record was basically finished two years ago. I mean, we changed and, and because we had the time during COVID, but basically it was planned to have been finished and to be released two years ago. Um, but we didn't want to, to, to release an album in the middle of the COVID pandemia. The pandemia. And um, so you can deduct, for, from 14, you can deduct two years. That may, still makes it 12 years, which, which is a long time. Yeah, it was always like, uh, it didn't feel right to come up with that. And that was the moment to come up with it. Um, and I think, so we started in, in, in 2018 already making plans for this record and um well it's then then we had a break we had a, we, because we had rec, we had problems with our old japanese record company this is when but this is politics again it's so there were there were delays because all of a sudden we lost our japanese record company which they didn't tell us so you know when you make a contract with a record company um, they normally have an option. That means if you make a new album, they have the right to release this album. And they have to pay for it. 
So we recorded, we started recording or making plans, and we said to this record company, so what about, are you going to take this option or to pull this option? He saying in there. And they said, yes, yes, yes. And they kept on saying yes for one and a half years until I said, well, if you say yes, at a certain point, there has to be, I mean, there has to be some commitment. Either you pay or whatever, but you just say, we, we will pull the, the option and nothing happened. And then they went, it took a long time and I had to write a letter in Japanese, which I can't, I had it translated and to the boss of the A&R guy. And then it turned out that this record company simply stopped releasing European bands. And they didn't tell us. I don't know if that's a Japanese way. And so then there was an, a, another break that we said, okay, now we have to see how we finance this record, how to find a new record company and all that. So there were always obstacles to overcome just because we're all musicians and have, and in the meantime did some other things that, that we did a living on. So that is basically the reason. Can we say that all those politics are the the reason why this album includes drama in the in the huh. title? Mm, the drama is more that it took so long, but not the politics. The politics are just annoying, but they're not that important that they deserve to, to show up in the title. Politics uh, record company politics are annoying, but nothing for a title. They don't deserve a title. They're just annoying. And it looked like this album was uh, doomed for you in, the, in certain ways. No, no, it didn't feel like it. That's the funny thing. It didn't, it, 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 even though it took long and we had breaks in making it, it always felt good when we were recording and listening and working on the songs that never, that, that was not the drama part. That was more the dreamy part. <laughs> um, no, it didn't feel doomed. It actually felt good making that album. And I, I, I can say that because I think I did, I don't know how many albums I did, but quite a lot. With Dreamtime, with Fair Warning, I worked for other people. And it's quite easy that working on an album, get, album is getting dramatic and it's getting a mess and it's getting... No, that, that was not the case with this album. Even though it took long, and even though there were obstacles, working on it, making the music, recording it, has always felt good. But, but then, that you, I never thought about it. It's good that you asked me that. That's that's a good point. No, it didn't. It, it felt good. And, and why did you decide to call it uh, Drama Does Dream? There's not just one reason. I, mean, I could say, I, I actually don't really know. I, I came up with this title and the other one said, well, sounds good. And I said, yeah, but every time I think about it, it somehow appears different to me. And I don't know who was that. I, I, some, some of, somebody of the other guy said, well, that's good then, isn't it? And I thought about it and said, yeah, whenever I come back to this title, it could have a different interpretation which I quite like the idea because, I mean, if you would call an album very exact, in this very exact way, like if you would call an album like Boris Johnson Sucks, well, there's not much of fantasy in it, is it? No, no fantasy there. <laughs> there's, there's, Only facts. There's, there's very little fantasy. There's very little imagination. There's very little inspiration. But having a, a title that every time you read... Like I had a list of, 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 of maybe 20 possible titles. And every time I came back to this, this drama, this dream, it, it somehow appeared in a different light. And that I liked. So that might not be a satisfying explanation, but there is none. Yeah, no, but it, it I, really I, sounds I, I, like I, a, a nice explanation. I could, I could instantly make up an interpretation, which, but that would only be one 
of a thousand interpretations, of, of many possible interpreta interpretations. So first, it's clear there, there had to be this uh, alliteration, this, the these, D, 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 D. Well, um, because all the, the past albums had that, I somehow like that, and I somehow like to keep it in a line and, 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 and follow a tradition that I like. Um, and it was, you know, drama, just dream, just it. You know, dreams can be dramatic, dreams can fall to dust. But if you put it in the end, then you, if you, I mean, if you, if you would have said dream, drama, dust, then you would have said dream, dream equals drama, equals or falls to dust. But if you put the dream in the end, if you say drama, dust, dream, then you could inter interpret that as whatever comes. If there comes drama, if, there, if, if life's getting dusty if, or rough, or if, so the dust picture for me is always somehow a desert covered in sand or dust. And the last one is dream. It's, it's, that is a running order of overcoming for me. But actually, that is just an interpretation I just made up. But it makes sense to me. And that happened. It does. And that happened every time I came back to this, this title. So that, that somehow, I have to say, I don't really know what it, what, I know what it can mean, but I don't actually, I don't, I for myself just like that it could have more than one meaning and that I wanted to pass on. Another thing I found funny is that your last three albums with Dream Tide always had the, the word dream in it. Yes. Uh, was this done on purpose, like related to Dream Tide, the name of the band? Of course. For, well, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily has to do with dream type, but that it has to be in there is, um, of course, is that is on purpose. We, we have, same thing is that we have on, on all the covers we have the dream catcher, and I mean dream is a powerful thing. It's like a goal. It's it's like something you want to go, go to. It's something you you get rest from. You, I mean I'm not I'm not. Fortunately, in English, there's the word dream and there's the word nightmare. I'm not talking about nightmares. So I'm talking about, I'm talking about dreams. And that is actually a powerful thing that I, I like to repeat in, in, in certain environments and certain connections. And um, it's a bit funny, of course. On the other hand, it's a bit funny to repeat it, to come up every time with like, oh, come on, Dreamtime has a new record. And there's something about Dream in there. There is, I mean, this is, I, I expect that. And I, I'm i serious in what I w want to, to mean with that and what I want to express with that. But it has it has a funny side too, which again, I like which, which, when things are not just completely in concrete and completely clear what they mean. So the, the, the um, having more meanings and, and, and having room for interpretation, that is something that I like. For also for the fans to find Easter eggs here and there, it's, it's, it's also uh, funny in that way. And, and lyrically, what does this album talk about? The songs? Yes. <laughs> well, a lot of songs, um, whew, every song is somehow different. I mean, it's not general in, in general that that the, that is an album about I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was my daughter having a question. So oh, no problem. Um, it. Oh, well, it depends on what song you want. I mean, is there any any special song you want to ask about, or do we start with the first one and end with the last one? I don't know. It's uh, there's well, I don't know. Like I uh, sometimes albums have uh, uh, like a concept behind. No, the, this album doesn't have. Okay. It goes from personal songs to to 
to ranting. <laughs> like I see something or I, I, I follow some politics or some stories or, or whatever and I keep swearing about people and my wife said, hey, why don't you swear about people? You cannot change it. Go and write a song, but leave me alone with that. So it can happen like that. Um, so for example, uh, all of us is is a bit like a and Leisure Saints is, is a bit like a song about scolding people and about complaining and about ranting and um, blaming people, but which is better to put it in, into a song than on the street. And then there are songs like, for example, um, Draw the Curtain. I think that is a song about giving up things and getting older and accepting that, that life changes when you're getting older. Uh, but sometimes I'm, I'm not so sure. I have, sometimes I have this intention and I know when I write these lyrics, I know, okay, this picture or this sentence, that makes sense for me. It, it's, it comes together in the picture for, for the framework of the song that I have. When, when I'm asked to explain it, then it's sometimes getting, it's getting a bit complicated. I could explain it, but about certain things, it, I, I would have to explain a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. Sometimes it's not, not easy to uh, understand what we, were, what we were trying to say in that particular situation. And yeah. Well, this is again, this is again the thing. I like to, I like to make things applicable in the lyrics too, applicable to different situations so that that not only I can relate to it. It could be that somebody who's listening to the song and and takes care for the lyrics. I mean, there's a lot of people, I mean, we, we have to face it. I'm like, what's your favorite song, let's say, from the 70s? From the 70s? Yes. It would have to be... Uh... Kill the King from Rainbow. Okay. Well, Kill the King, yeah, that's that, that, another one. Because Kill the King is quite, there's little room for interpretation, is there? Yeah, okay. yeah right. <laughs> it's really straightforward there. Yeah. Uh, like uh, then uh, uh, Stargazer. Okay, what's that about? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not Richard Blackmore, so. Uh, no, Richie Blackmore didn't write the lyric. That was the lyrics. That uh, was Ronnie James Dio. But anyway, yeah, yeah, but... so what is this? What's the song about? I don't we know. Build, it's... We we build a tower of stone and see him fly, fly, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> high noon, and we sold ourselves for water. I mean, come on, high noon, we sold ourselves for water. What is this about? What I want to say is. We sometimes, even with our favorite songs, we don't really listen to the lyrics. I mean, we listen to them, but with the melody, but about the sense, we sometimes don't really care as long as we lush the yeah, We listen, but we don't pay attention to it. We don't pay attention. So that in some, I mean, I, I did records and I worked with people. Fortunately, that doesn't happen in, in Dreamtime and it didn't happen in Fair Warning. I worked with people when, and, and I, I was in a studio and said, eh, what you're singing there, this is, this is actually really wrong. I mean, it's grammatically wrong and it, it doesn't make sense. And people say, ah, no, that nobody listened to this, don't care for that. This I don't want, this I don't like. I want, I want to offer the poss possibility to read the lyrics and that the lyrics make sense. That I want, but I don't want that to limit to one. Sometimes it's quite limited to, to one interpretation. For example, Merciless Sun, there's little room for inter interpretation what that is about. This, this is about, about um, environmental, uh, environmental devastation. That's quite clear. Um, Stop Being Deep, well, that, that's actually meant to be funny. Because if you make a song about stop being deep, isn't that deep as well? I don't know. I'm not too sure. That's that's what I like about that. So I don't want to have senseless lyrics, but 
I want to, like with the title, I want to have lyrics that are inspirational, that you can think about it. And if you don't want to think, think about it and just enjoy the music, that's fine too. Yeah, like uh, they make sense, but they don't, they are not making too much sense. No, they make, to me, no, no, they make a lot of sense, but the music works. Yeah, yeah, they make sense, but they're not it, very deep. Not, sometimes they are. I think sometimes they are, and sometimes they are meant to be like that. No, that's, that's, that's a misunderstanding. What I say is the music works without the deepness of the, of the, of, of the, of, of, the lyrics and they work without the sense of the lyrics it's i, I um you know what program music is program music like uh, programming things in a computer no like like what what richard wagner did or the romantic composers that is most most of that is let's say it's an opera and somebody sings about a thunderstorm then the music tries to emulate the thunderstorm. That's, that happens in romantic classical music. And that's called program music. And this is nothing for me. For me, it's just like, I will not write a love song on a, on a, on a completely aggressive rock song, but it's not when, um, There's a certain line in the in, in, in the in the lyrics that the music has to reflect that. I give you an example. Um, you most likely know all along the Watchtower from by Jimi Hendrix, the Bob Dylan song. You don't yes, know? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really uh, not that old, you know. So it's it's okay. Do you know that song? It, it, it doesn't I don't make, maybe I know it, but I, I'm, I don't, I'm not recognizing yeah, it. it from the it's, it's anyway, it's a very famous song written by Dr. Bob Dylan, um, made famous by Jimi Hendrix, covered by many people. But that's not the point. There's some lyrics in there that are um, that saying two riders are approaching. OK, so. And Jimi Hendrix just played it and sang these two riders are approaching. Bob Dylan played and just sang two riders are um, approaching. And a friend of mine covered this song. And when this line came, he did with the guitar, duck, da, da, duck, da, da, duck, da, da, duck. and I said, what is this part there? And he said, these are the horses. Two riders are approaching. These are the horses. Duck, da, da, duck, da, da, duck. And I said, hey, no, this is music. We're not making like, like a theater out of it. So that I, don't, that I don't like. But lyrics have to make sense. And there has to be the, the offer of understanding them and being um, inspiration, yeah. So sermon ended. <laughs> and sometimes it, can, it may not be easy to try to uh, combine both parts. But so, I, I, I think you, you you did a great job here. Thank you. Thank uh, now, uh, to this album, as previously in the other albums, you gathered the No Star lineup. Uh, was it easy to unite on these wonderful musicians? Under uh, Dream Tight? Well, Thorsten and Olaf have always been there. And um, on the last, the, the changes that came from the last album that, that, that Francis and, and, and Cece are not part of this album. I mean, there was no trouble, there was no fight. It was just that, like, <sighs> they're not getting younger. I mean, I'm not saying they told me. Anyway, they didn't want to be part of it. I said, we're going, Olaf and me talked about making another Dreamtime album. Do you want to be part of it? And one said, I said, no, I'm kind of retired. And the other one said, well, I have to think about it and then didn't call back. So, but I talked to him later and he said, oh, was I supposed to call back? And I said, yes. And as uh, he said, oh, <laughs> so, so we had two new members. We had a, a drummer and the, <clears throat> and the bass player. And the bass player were, <laughs> well, Lars is like the base visit around here. And I, I knew his work with other bands and I met him several times and we actually were joking on Facebook about he was playing some funk bass or whatever. And I said, hey, what about making, why do you do this funk stuff, make real music? And he said, hey, I'm a rock guy. This funk is just because, yeah, you know, I'm teaching bass and blah, blah, blah. 
And I said, mm, you're a rock guy. I'm not playing all this stuff. I mean, I knew that he, by heart, from, from the heart, is a rock bass player, and I really appreciate his player. And then he said, why don't you send some songs over and I'll play them? And I said, yeah, okay, we're looking for a new bass player. You're hired. <laughs> Pretty straightforward process, right? No, it was more like an accident, but exactly yeah. what, what, what turned out really well. And Olaf, anyway, uh, I love working with Olaf because it's... I mean, I've been, I'm doing, making records for over 30 years now, almost 40 years now. And I work with a lot of singers. And it, it doesn't have to do with the quality of the singers, but with just singer, with some singers, you, well, it has to do with the quality. I mean, even though you work with a really good singer, sometimes they're really unflexible. And it has to be chemistry between who writes the songs yeah, and no, the singer. Good, no, there can be good chemistry, but it depends a bit if you, you, I mean, if you write your own songs as a singer, that's a different story. But if I, I write the songs and I write for somebody, then I have, oh, how can I say that? Did you have a toy train? Yes. You had a toy train. Okay, good. Yeah. So you played with your toy. It makes sense in a second. Um, you play with your toy train and then other children come along and they bring toys to play. I had a toy train to, uh, as well and I hated when other children brought, I hated it when other children brought toys that didn't fit the scale. So we had the train there and we had the railway station always fitting and then somebody came with a cow that was twice as big as the railway station. I didn't like that as a child and I didn't come to like that as a grown up. So, and that is the case when you make a song, you're building a world. And sometimes when you're working with other people, they're putting in the cow that is twice as big and doesn't fit. Or you're building a world which is like a jungle or, or, or a forest. And somebody comes with a polar bear and says, look, wouldn't a polar bear be nice? I said, no, there are no polar bears in the jungle. Forget it. And then can happen with ideas of singers or other musicians you work with. These ideas, as ideas, it could be a beautiful polar bear, but a polar bear doesn't have, it doesn't have to do anything in my song. And these things don't happen with Olaf and me, and they don't uh, happen with Thorsten and me, and they don't have, happen with Lars and me. And that is really a, a joy, enjoyable work, because I do demos of these songs, and I play, play pretty much everything myself, and I sing it, and blah, 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 blah. And then they come in and change things. And then it can happen, what happened to me during the last years several times, that somebody comes up with something that for me is the polar bear and the jungle. And, and then the discussion starts. Um, people say, yeah, well, it's, it's, isn't it special having a polar bear in the jungle? And you said, no, it's not special. It just doesn't fit. And these discussions don't happen in Dreamtide. And that is, that is really makes the work with all that last and talk makes it really enjoyable. Yeah, because in the end, uh, a song uh, for a songwriter is like a, a baby for a, a father or for a mother. It's like their baby, it's what they built. Yeah, and if the baby gets a too long nose all of a sudden, you don't want that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, how did you uh, write the, the, the songs for this album? Uh, one by one? No, obviously, but uh, we're, how were your process like? Uh, uh, like okay. starting with a melody or starting with a riff? No, I'm, I'm, comp I'm a comp I'm, there's complete anarchy with me. It can be anything. It just can be anything. It can be that I just sit and play guitar and, and say, oh, this might make a nice riff. It can be, it can be a drum beat that I find interesting. It can be. It can even be a, 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 a lyrical phrase that, 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 that I build around music. It can be on the piano, it can be on, on, on the keyboard, it can be on an acoustic guitar, it can really be anything. And so this now sounds like, oh, I can make a song out of everything. No, no, it's, the ideas can start out from anything. That doesn't, I mean, I have loads of ideas that didn't go anywhere, no matter where they started. And for the 
very first time on this record, there's one song that's called Dawn. Um, that was written in a completely different way. On our first Dreamtide album, we had an instrumental song called Phoenix Tears. And that was keyboards and guitar and very calm atmosphere and dreamy atmosphere. And uh, Olaf said, oh, let me add some vocals. And he, he did some sounds, just sounds like, mm, but well, much more beautiful than I can. And, uh, so he added some sounds. Now I had this guitar part for Dawn. And I didn't know if this is going to be an instrumental. I just had this nice part. I didn't think about anything. It was like, I, it was a bit like, Okay, I have this part, and I could make a song of, out of it, but it could be, it could be like this, and it's instrumental. And I decided, okay, this we we, we try something. I send it to Olaf. Normally, he comes to my place, and we record the vocals two together. So I sent this um, basic idea to to Olaf. I mean, it was completely the part that's now already on the record. I sent it to him, and I was expecting to get back some just vocal sounds like long notes or something but no it came back as a song with with, with the melody picking up the guitar part and i really like that and so then we said um okay let's then he came and we we, we put the lyrics together to we wrote the lyrics together um and that was quite unnormal for Dreamtime, but I really liked it. I, I like to repeat that because it, it turned out to be a very nice song. And that was different to me writing the songs all alone. And again, there's no uh, uh, polar bear in the jungle. No, there's no follow. No, no. It was, it was absolutely not the kind of monkeys I would have expected, but it was quite fitting monkeys in the jungle. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, moving on from uh, Dreamtimes, currently you also play in uh, Fair Warning. Do you have any plans for the new future, a new album maybe? Not that I know. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I haven't, I haven't heard of the other guys for years. Um, the last time I spoke to the singer was the... 27th of February 2018. That was the last time I spoke to talked to the singer. That was four, four, that's four and a half years ago. And I haven't heard from back from him since then. So I don't know. And so right now Dream Tide is your main focus. Of course, yes. But you know, this is this is this is a bit complicated to say because people I read that and in reviews or in announcements, so this is a side project and this is the main project. No, I never I never worked like that. I mean, that is partly the reason because it took 14 years. Because I never, it's, I never considered any of the things I do as a side project. And it's not, I, I simply can't. I mean, if I do one thing, I do this thing, and it's not like, oh, I'm going to do this for four hours now, and then I do something else. No, when I'm, when I'm, for example, producing records for for somebody else, I just do that for the time that it takes, and then I move on to the next thing. So, for me and in my perception, all the records that I ever did, none of the records was a side project they all were the main project i was focusing at the moment at the mo very moment when it got done i was focusing focusing on that and some records took half a year some records took one year some records took four months some records even took two years and some took 14 years now we didn't work constantly for 14 years but I never considered anything of what I do as a side pro project or as something not as important. It's, I just, I, I simply cannot. It's, 
you know, it's like giving interviews. You might wonder why I'm talking so much, but it's like I want to be understood. <laughs> no, no, no. It's 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 actually good when people I'm interviewing talk so much because <laughs> see, it gives me ideas to new questions while I'm talking to them. Um, you know, like answering one one answer one uh, like one phrase doesn't work for me. Okay, um, and it's I want if I'm working on things, you get everything of me. You get complete. You get everything. I mean, I got kicked out of pro projects because of that. I, I, like three years ago, there was a very interesting project that it sounds ridiculous now, but it should end in a musical. But it was not meant as a musical. It was kind of rock music, and I was asked to help and to be involved. And um, and I said, okay. And it was about a historical thing, and I found the idea interesting. So, and then they, then I got learned how, how, how they, they, what the idea behind this thing was. And I said, oh, yeah, I like the story and blah, 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 blah. But I saw that they made historical mistakes and, 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 and using words that somehow don't make sense. And I, I, and I openly said that. And I said, hey, look, this is shit. And there were other people in, in, involved arranging the song. So I was uh, asked to arrange and, and, and produce some songs. And somebody else was asked to um, arrange and produce some songs, and they played it to me and they said, "Look, this has a jazz approach." And I said, "What? I'm not jazz. I'm, if you ask me, you will not. You will get anti-jazz. You will get everything but jazz. What, what is your idea having this jazz guy in there? This is just sucks. This is just shit." So I got fired, and the other guy got fired too. Uh, <laughs> so what I want to say is. I'm always giving 100% and, and I'm, I'm in it and I want to, to make it good. And I, I, I cannot be just the guitar player and, and shut up. That simply doesn't work for me, unfortunately. Yeah, you have to be involved. And which are your two implants for uh, drama The Stream? This is sometimes saying, whatever plans we have, it has to be financed. And that works only if we get, if we get a good offer for a tour. If we plan our tour ourselves, we can make plans, I don't know. Um, but the truth is, at the moment, there are big concerts and there are the festivals. But at least here in Germany and um, in other parts I know of, the, we're not, we would not play in big halls, we would play clubs. And I don't think that, that it's just time for us to, to play that because there's a long list of bands more famous than we are who didn't play in the last two years and they, I don't see it realistically that we play this year. I see if we want to play, we start playing the festivals next summer if this record does, does well. So that's the plan. And I hope next year I can see you uh, in also in my little country in Portugal. Uh, yeah, I would... I've, never, I've never been to Portugal. No, I've, you really what, should. I've been, I've been close, but never been there. Uh, not I've, even I've, with, uh, not even like uh, in holidays or touring with uh, Fair Warning. No, never. Been no? To okay. No, never. Um, but I know our bass player loves it. He, he goes there quite quite frequently. Lars. Yeah, everyone likes it. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. Uh, <laughs> now, if you had to rate all the albums that you played in, on which position would Drama Dust uh, Dream be? Um, I... Well, okay. The Japanese records company... Okay, the, Jap the, the Japanese releases follow a very old-fashioned tradition. They have liner notes in their records. And these liner notes are either written by one of the musicians or by a journalist anyway. So for this, um, for this record, the Japanese record company asked me to write liner notes. And I said, when you asked to write, I wrote these liner notes and I wrote, like in the beginning, when you're asked about your recent album, each and everybody 
says this of course is the best album we ever did which is if you consider statistics it's quite unlikely that it is true on the other hand it is completely and absolutely not possible for a musician to judge his own work because you start making music, you learn an instrument, you start making records, and you learn things. And if you keep on learning things, all these things that you've learned go into, of course, the latest record. And even if it's an illusion, but in your consciousness, you've learned a lot of things that you've made better than in the albums before. And that's only natural. It's not just a, a, a stupid promo idea to say, well, most likely that is the best record I've ever done, or that I ever did, or I have ever done. But it's somehow a natural because you know what you did there. But how the audience will see that? I mean, every new album is a challenge for the audience because if there are things that are unexpected they might say oh this this new twist i don't like if everything is fulfilling the expectations it would be like oh hmm, yeah but there's nothing new is there so you try I mean, and it's all, it's always impossible to please everyone. It's impossible to please everyone. But these two points I mentioned is not something that I said the audience, that's clear. But I'm my own audience. And that is applicable to me as well. I want to keep the things I like. I want to change the things I didn't like too much in the old album, in the previous album, or things that with with the distance of some years, you said, hmm, this and that we could have made better. But in my case, it's sometimes, it's mostly about songs. So when I'm asked about the old songs or the old albums or the, the, the albums before, or all the albums I would, I've, done, I've done, the main point of criticism I would have is, oh, we shouldn't have put this song on the album. It would have survived without this song as well and we had too many weak songs on the album that happened on some fair warning albums dream type albums there are only three i think i would find in these three i would find in each one no on all of them i would find some songs that today i would not put on the record um with the new album i cannot say that Just, i i only the test of time will tell. If, the test uh, of time will tell. And at the moment, I, I just know that we did the best we could. And that's another good thing about, um, about Dreamtype. There's nobody in there who says, oh, come on. we." Well, OK, this is, this is about some, a bit about work ethics. Well, uh, you, know, you know people who say you you say um, you work with, and you say, okay, we did this today, this and this and this today, and blah, 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 but tomorrow we have to do this and this and this because it's not good enough yet. Yeah. And the other one says, yeah, but we've worked for a long time already. And I would go, yes, we worked for a long time, but still, it's not good enough. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm not willing to put more work in. And this is something. It's a long time, and that there's still road to go ahead. There's still things you can improve. Yeah, no, it's not that there's still things improved. If it's just not good enough for your own standards, then you have to go on, no matter what, how many time you just already put in it. And if it's not get well, there's there's a certain point when you have to say, it's not getting better than this. But I experienced many people who just. Who had a clear relationship, or no, not a, not, uh, not a relationship, a relation, a clear relation of the effort that is going to be be the input there 
and the outcome and the time they're willing to, to, to invest. So I produced bands, I produced records where somebody, where, where I said, okay, we recorded this guitar part today and maybe we're going on, but this guitar part we have to record tomorrow again. It's simply not good enough. And then the guitar player said, yeah, but we spent already two hours on that. And no, I cannot. I said, yes, tomorrow you can. And he said, no, I don't want to. And I said, okay, then we're not getting anywhere. The good thing in Dreamtide is this just doesn't happen. Everybody, if, if we agree on something is not good enough, we just do it again. As long as it takes. Yeah, and it really shows the in the, the quality this album uh, I, has. I hope. That is another thing I'm getting a bit annoyed about these days. I mean, I, I grew up liking music. And of course, some of these bands or people that I liked are still around. And... On the other hand, I like new bands, whatever. But I see that music is done sometimes cheaply, and that I don't like. Like bands putting out every year record and the song quality suffers and whatever. They, they couldn't be good in some aspects. For example, I just listened to a record off, I'm not going to say the name, um, of a, a guitar player I used to like very much. And I listened to his new record, and he played really well. It's very good guitar on there, but the songs I don't like at all. And I, I'm, I think I have the expert expertise to say, and, and, and the knowledge and the experience to say, I can tell that these songs are put together in a hurry. This is not good. And that happens to me with quite a lot of records, and that I don't want for Dreamtime. And as hopefully I can avoid that. Yeah, I hope so. Well, Helg, it's been an honor. I really enjoyed this this chat. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.